everyone wants to own the land, but from the Sami perspective, I mean, it's impossible to own land. It's a part of, of the world that we all are living on. If you want a green economy, you will need more metals, and that metal has to come from somewhere. The reindeer is the backbone of the of Sami culture. We know how much a mine affects a reindeer herding community. They need this iron or the copper or whatever it is, so we have to move. Mining in Europe has been under pressure for decades. Of course we have an impact on environment, but should we build our entire climate transition on metals being produced in other continents? We will pass a tipping point when it's not possible to, for the reindeers to survive anymore. And we will lose the entire Sami culture and the last indigenous people of, of, of Europe will disappear. This is Europe's largest copper mine located in northern Sweden. Copper, along with 33 other raw materials, is considered critical for Europe's economy, which is why in the next five years, governments across the bloc will be pushing for projects like this one on European soil. I've come here to see what this means for the mining industry, for local communities, and for Europe's future. This is spring in north of Sweden for you. We produce around 45 million tons each year war which is uh, being uh, transported further down south in Sweden in order to be refined and uh, sent to customers. Humans have been mining copper for thousands of years, but the energy and digital transitions have sparked an unprecedented interest for this metal, renowned for its remarkable conductivity of electricity. In Sweden, several projects are underway to tackle an anticipated 40% increase in global demand by 2040. Mill owners. The middle class continues to expand and again they demand copper. That's why copper is called Dr. Copper. It follows the growth of GDP in the world. Everything is being electrified and everything will need copper. So we will demand more copper going forward. We have a, quite a weak copper production in Europe today. We are heavily reliant on other continents. We need to start expanding and developing new copper deposits. Expansion at Boliden is already underway. Another copper deposit right beside the main open pit will begin producing ore this year. But this excavation comes at a cost. Some 100 people living near the new pit, like Katarina, had to be relocated. This was David's camp against Goliath, that we small fastnets ägare ska liksom försöka hävda oss mot det här stora bolaget som har alla resurser. Man vet att de har hur mycket pengar som helst. Och ändå känner man att de i början försöker komma med skambud. After six years of tense discussions, Katarina finally struck a deal with Boliden and moved to a new home 30 kilometers away from the one that had belonged to her family for five generations. Rent materiellt sett så har vi fått en jättestor standardökning. Vi har ett nyare hus, vi har ett större hus. Så det är jag glad för. Men jag säger fortfarande att vi är fortfarande förlorarna. För vi har tappat alla våra, min sociala kontext. It was a nice place. I am announcing a European Critical Raw Materials Act. The story of Katarina and Boliden highlights the hurdles facing Europe's Critical Raw Materials Act adopted by the European Parliament in late 2023. Copper, lithium, cobalt and all 34 metals and minerals are now considered vital for electric batteries, renewable energy systems and modern weapons. The goal is to meet their explosive demand by diversifying imports, increasing EU-made processing and recycling, and accelerating mining permits in Europe. By 2030, the EU aims to mine at least 10% of its annual consumption of raw materials, up from about 3% currently. For this Brussels-based researcher, this reflects a new political reality. This is very ambitious and it might be challenging to achieve this in practice, especially given that most of the studies, most available studies, they cite 10 to 15 years as the amount of time required to basically open, to start the operation of a new mine. I think that the war in Ukraine shaked things here in Brussels and we realized that basically depending on, on, a, on any country or a region for our raw material supplies, you know, it could entail risks for Europe in the future. 
Every shape on this map represents a deposit of critical raw materials, and new geological studies could reveal even more. But for each new mine, local resistance is likely to arise. I think it's very possible that we know we've, we will see some local opposition when it comes to opening a new mine. The environmental impacts of mining depend very much on, on the local environment, whether, for example, there, is, there are abundant water resources, whether the mine is closer to a forest or to an area with, with high biodiversity. So there are impacts, we know this, but at the same time, our consumption patterns haven't changed. In fact, if you look into demand for raw materials, it has even increased in recent years. So there is, let's say, there is a trade-off here. Back in northern Sweden, I meet with Nila Inga, a member of the Sami, the EU's only indigenous people. Their traditional land spanning four countries has been gradually fragmented by a combination of mining, logging, cities and transport networks. For reindeer herders like Nila, this industrial development threatens not only their livelihoods, but also the entire Sami culture. Our migration routes that the reindeer uses has been cut off and moved, moved bit by bit. In Sweden, you are killing an indigenous people. You're not shooting them, but you're taking away their, their opportunity to continue with their traditional lifestyle. One mining company especially has shaped the landscape and the history of this region, the state-owned LKAB. Their underground iron ore mine in Kiruna active since the late 19th century, is the largest in the world. But another discovery, right outside Kiruna, has put Sweden at the heart of Europe's scramble for the planet's declining resources. We have uh, discovered the largest deposit of REEs within Europe. REEs, or rare earth elements, are a subgroup of strategic metals with unique properties, found in many places around the world, but in very small quantities. Today, China is the undisputed leader in this market, providing Europe with nearly 100% of its REE needs. The EU is way too dependent on other countries for these materials. There is a, really a great potential for Europe to now take the lead in the green transition. We can reduce carbon footprint and strengthen our competitiveness at the same time. Not everyone in Kiruna is swayed by this argument. Karin, a local Sami, suspects LKAB of using the so-called green transition to further encroach on Sami land. Det nu passar att även kalla den grön. Det var ju i samband med Sverige övertog ordförandeskapet i EU. Så naturligtvis så var det ett presstrick. Men det var ju också ett sätt att sätta press på EU. För att trycka fram den här Critical Raw Material Act. LKAB refused to be interviewed for this story. But Karin's opinion is shared by environmental NGOs who have criticized the industry's lobbying efforts to grant strategic mining projects a superior public interest than nature protection. Regardless of the next EU elections results, metals will remain a priority for Europe, potentially heightening tensions between energy transition and autonomy on the one hand and local environmental concerns on the other. De säger att de har sina gruvor för klimatets skull. Och det säger jag bara bullshit. De har sina gruvor för att tjäna pengar. Det är ingen som öppnar en gruva för att rädda klimatet. In the western world it's an abusive standpoint to say that we want all of that infrastructure here but we should not produce any of the minerals here. If we want to change or save the planet we have to change our, our way of living also. Do we need all this stuff? Do we need, need a new car? Do we need new phone on, every year? We are overconsuming, and that's the biggest reason why we have this, this climate collapse. Ultimately, in the face of this climate crisis, Europe will need to bridge competing interests as it navigates an uncertain transition from fossil fuel addiction to dependency on metals.